Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ our Lord is risen and we celebrate. We celebrate his love for us. We celebrate that he's forgiven us our sins, that we have a new life with him. In memory of this love and in celebration of this love, we bring to him today what we want healed and forgiven. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us give glory to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now, the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, the high priest questioned the apostles, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. And they charged the apostles not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. 
I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up, and have not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you have lifted up my soul from the grave, restored me to life from those who sink into the pit. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. Sing psalms to the Lord, you faithful ones. Give thanks to his holy name. His anger lasts a moment, his favor all through life. At night there are tears, but at dawn comes joy. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Be my helper, O Lord. You have changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord my God, I will thank you forever. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and I heard around the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all therein saying, To him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might for ever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ has risen who created all things and has had mercy on the human race. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to John, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in for the quantity of fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Jesus, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his clothes, who was stripped for work, and sprang into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish lying on it and bread. 
Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. The second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you fastened your own belt and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will fasten your belt for you and bring you where you do not wish to go. This he said to show by what death he was to glorify God. And after this he said to him, Follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine winning a hundred million rand and not telling anybody about it? I find it rather hard to imagine that anybody would be so unmoved by this good fortune that they wouldn't let at least a little bit of joy break through. How about, can you imagine a friend whom you thought was dead walking into your home and making you a fantastic breakfast, as he had done so many times before. Wouldn't, one, wouldn't you want to get on the phone and call every single friend you had to invite them to take part in this feast? Would this good news change your life in deep and profound ways? Well, Peter and the apostles received the best possible news ever, that Jesus was alive. And that meant he really was their Lord, their Savior, the Messiah. And this was good news that they could not bottle up inside of them. This good news simply bubbled out of them, and it led them to preach this good news of the resurrection. And even more, it led them to do great miracles in his name, the healing of the sick. And yet we have the religious leaders of the time telling them to be quiet, to not say or do anything about the good news of the resurrection. The response of Peter is quite simple. 
we obey God, not man. We must do what is right, not what is expedient. We must do what God has written on our hearts, not what our deepest fears and inadequacies dictate. The gospel gives some idea of what God wants from us, just as he wanted from Peter. Our response to God's love for us is to offer ourselves in service to others. Today he says to you, Anne-Marie, do you love me? Feed my lambs. Frankie, do you love me? Tend my sheep. John, do you love me? Feed my sheep. It seems to me that the greatest acts of love and service are not born out of duty or contractual obligation. They arise out of a relationship of love. They arise from hearts striving to return love for love, mercy for mercy, compassionate forgiveness for compassionate forgiveness. The dialogue between Peter and Jesus, we hear Peter affirming his deep and all-consuming love for Christ and implicit in the giving of his mission. It's the wiping away of his sin, the sin of his betrayal, but also an invitation, not invitation, command to extend that same love and care to those whom Jesus loves that he now entrusts into the hands of Peter. Do you feel loved by God? Do you feel that in his death and resurrection, all your sins have been wiped away, and that you've been given a new life, another chance? And if you do, how will that change your life? What are you going to do? Now, brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we continue to celebrate the resurrection, confident that Christ intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father, we make our prayers in his name. For Pope Francis, that he may be blessed with the gifts of integrity, courage, and humility as he feeds the flock that the Lord has entrusted to his care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for the sake of the gospel, that the Holy Spirit will bless them as they witness to the risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayers. For the leaders of nations, that they may work for the good of all and strive for peace, justice, and the flourishing of all humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our own parish community, that we will always provide a welcome for the Lord in the many guises in which we meet him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, the homeless and the housebound, that Jesus, the risen Saviour, may give them grace and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God our Father, in Christ you have made us your daughters and your sons. Give us the grace, we pray, to accept and live to the full the new life you have given us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, for become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God's bread. Let with us water and wine, for we come to share in the divinity of Christ, and with himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. This is the God friend. Let me not wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never stop gathering a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly pray, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we bring to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, to be poured out for you for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now profess our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, whose wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, they become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant prayers we rely for help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and with Butitlachale, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you've gained for yourself. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
which is through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, but mercy on us. Man of God, you take away the sins of the world, but mercy on us. Man of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my life, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, giving God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.